Hello and welcome, welcome back to the channel and in today's episode we will be creating this cool howling shooter when you're fighting off the waves of, en of enemies and after you're done with the waves of enemies which I hope I can achieve pretty quickly you will be faced with a boss battle. The boss has, has few abilities, um, as you can see, and he also has two phases where he will grow stronger as he loses health, just like any uh, Souls-like game. You will also be able to choose the background of your game and the type of the character that you're playing. Let me show you that. You can choose from few characters to play. And then also you will be able to choose the level. I only configured and filled out the castle level that you've seen, but probably if you also choose forest, you can see that what you have is a different background. And here you can place the waves of the monsters and the boss, all of which are pretty configurable. So Let's get started. Let's start by creating our project. I will be using Godot 4.1, 4.2, sorry, beta one. Let's create new project. Let's find a proper place for it. I will create new folder called this Halloween Shooter Tutorial. And let's select current folder. Uh, the render is going to be set to forward as per usual. A version control metadata doesn't matter, but I'll stick with Git for now. Let us start by bringing in and discussing all of the assets. Uh, most of the assets, I mean, all of the assets are from each IO from the free bundles with the uh, very open and liberal license. The same goes for the font and music and sounds. So let me just bring that in. Okay. So here we have assets folder and all of the assets are spread into different categories. We have some UI elements, we have sounds, we have smoke effect, the player projectiles, and then we have the music, the font, enemies, uh, of which we have pretty large set, and I'm not using all of the uh, assets from here. So if you'd like, you can just create your own enemies with your own set of properties, and also the background, there's a moon that you can also add to your levels somewhere if you'd like. Let's start by creating the first scene and that scene is going to be the one we'll use to uh, select our uh, character. So I'm going to use other node and I'm going to use canvas layer since what we're building will not be a part of the gameplay per se but rather the part of the UI. And I'm going to call this main menu or maybe character selection, something like this. Let's save that scene. Let's create a new folder, call it scenes and let's stick it in here. And then let us create some elements. First, I'm going to go to project settings and find the setting for the clear color which is going to be in the rendering environment section and changes to all black. And then I'm going to add a child node. This is going to be texture rect. I'm going to call this background. I'm going to make it spread across the whole screen. And for the texture, 
let me see i'm gonna use the background castle and it is stretch so this is not looking good i'm gonna change this to tile and then i'm gonna set the custom minimum size in the layout to 600 and then what we also need to do is to stretch it properly because it does look strange let me save this let's go to transform and change the size um how do you do this anchor preset oh let's change this okay and then for the scale let me set this to 2.75 and now it looks correct um the other thing that we could also change is the color of it so if we go to our if we go to visibility and modulate we can change the color of it and the color that i have here is this nice nice dark purplish so it's a little bit darker and then the other elements of the ui will be way more visible uh let's select current as the main and yeah there we have it this is will be our background uh, now is the time to uh, create the rest of the ui so let's start by adding the margin container uh, and let's add and modify the top constant to be 64 and also make it spread across the screen okay then to add our labels let's start by adding the v box container and i will add two labels and then we can duplicate it for both of those we will change the font so let's go to theme overrides fonts and let's drag and drop the font and then set the text the text number one is gonna say Halloween shooter but the configuration left top is fine the one thing that we need to change is the uh, color and the font size so let's collapse Let's open theme overrides. Font is already changed. Font size can be set to 60. Uh, let's align it into a center. This is good. And then I want to change the color, which is invisibility, modulate, and the color that I have chosen. I have this pre prepared. And this is FF3C5E apply this so this is this nice pinkish color and then below we'll add another um, another wonderful label this time change the font size to be 48 okay uh, and let's say something like choose your fighter or choose your monster or whatever also make it stick to the center and then we are done uh, we could name it a little bit better title and maybe title label and then select or choose fighter label and then we can start working on our uh, wonderful fighter selector. So let's start by adding center container. 
which should be in the center. Let's give it custom minimum size by going to layout and let's make it 200 by 200. And then we need um, two things, which is edge box container. And then we need, or do we need those? Maybe just V box container actually. V box container. Perfect. And let's start adding the textures. One, two, three, four. Let's call them run key texture like Frankenstein. Then we have Wolfie like Wolverine. How do you call this? The Wolfman texture. Werewolf. Then we have a witch. And the last one is the hunter texture. You can start applying assets which are in, uh, let me see, you should have a faces here. Yeah, player UI elements, player portraits. That's what I'm looking for. So wolf is a wolfie. So UI elements. Then we have Frankie. Then we have Hunter. And then we have a witch. Perfect. A uh, few things to fix here. Let's select all of those textures. Let's go to texture. Change the filter to nearest. Right. And basically, we don't need to have to do this every time i believe we could go to project settings and find uh let's search for filter and default default texture filter we get changes to nearest so it will automatically apply to rest uh let's see for the configuration let's select all we want to keep size we want to set this to scale and then for each, we need to apply custom minimum size to make it show property. So for Frankie, we have 40, 36 and 48. For Wolfie, we have 44 and 42. For which we have uh, 48 and 48. And for Hunter, we have 44 and 48. Perfect. Uh, so we have that. Then what we need also is a way for us to actually select one of those uh, persons, of those fighters. So what I'm going to do is very simply, I'm going to add a texture rect. I'm going to call this pointer, move it up here, and I'm going to find select. Yes, find select, and I also need to, oops, to give it proper size. Come on, to select this, let's uh, lock it, and then we will have no problems so you can lock a layer by clicking on uh, lock selected nodes cool uh, then let's see what the size of that should be and this is 24 and 20 okay uh, with custom size and we need to keep okay and this feels a little bit too big let's see keep size keep i think like this 
is incorrect. Keep size sale 3648. No, it does look it does look strange, but that's fine. Okay, then we have the pointer. Oh, we can fix how the uh, heads are looking by selecting them and just making them centered. Now they have a correct proportion. The same I think could be done here. No. It does feel like it's too big. Let's see, anchor press it. Correct. Okay, I believe we can manipulate the size of it by hand by just grabbing this and this and now let's try to center it let's go center it incorrectly but i believe this is fine keep keep size okay so this is going to be our pointer to select uh, any fighter, but we have to somehow be able to move between the position corresponding to given character. So um, this can be done with some position calculation, but I'm going to just do it very, very easily by adding a simple empty node, calling this select selector positions and I'm going to add few marker to the so let's grab that and let's find the position for each character so this is going to be Frankie position then we will have around here and let's make sure that the um, the position on the x-axis is the same this is 508 so this should be also 508 so this is a Wolfy position let's copy this drag this down and here this is going to be which position and then we will have hunter position. Okay, so we will be moving our pointer through all of these wonderful, beautiful um, characters. Okay. Uh, and with that all set up, we can basically uh, go and start coding so let's do this let's add a script that's going to be our first gd script let's go up and let's create scripts folder and let's create that okay remove everything let's start by creating a class name uh, first, we're going to grab the reference to a pointer. And then we'll also create a reference to the positions of the selector. And let's just drop everything in here. Okay, perfect. Let's start the current index for the uh, fighter that we are trying to choose. And then on ready, I can just set the pointer position to selector position zero position. Let's see where that works. That looks correct. 
great. Uh, then we'll need to find actions for our uh, user to move between our fighters. So let's go to project settings and let's define the uh, input map. So we need down action, up action, left action, right action, uh, set action, and shoot action. And that's gonna be S, W, A, D, enter, and space. Perfect. And with that, we can basically um, add to our script to the functionality to move and to accept given character to play. So let's use input callback. And if input is actually just pressed up, We'll check current index. If current index is equal to zero, we cannot do, we cannot go higher. So let's just turn. Otherwise, current index, we're gonna say minus equals one. Um, and to create that very simple animation of the pointer moving between the uh, selector points will use a twin. So let's get three. Create twin. And we'll twin between the positions. So twin property um, pointer position. Move it to selector points current index the position with the weight of 0.5 uh, currently okay let's that's not gonna work because we are starting at the highest position so we have to write the code to move down to test it it's actually just pressed down and that's this is going to be pretty much the same so let's just copy that uh, we have to only change few things first the if um, condition selector point size minus one here we do plus one Okay, and that should allow us to very easily move between the positions in the UI. Perfect. Then for choosing the fighter and for accepting it, you can imagine that we will not be using the information about the chosen um, character in the very same scene. So you have to somehow transition that information between scenes. And to do that, we, could, we can use a single tones or auto loads, as it's called here in, um, in Godot. So let's start by going to project settings, uh, choose auto load tab, and we will create, we'll add a um, script. So that's going to be called game config. Let's place it in scripts and let's create it and let's open it up. By the way, you can uh, search through files and scripts by pressing Ctrl P and then just providing a name of the file that you would like to open. Okay, this is going to be very simple. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just have player type and um, him here say Frankie Wolfie witch and hunter and then we'll also store a player type here 
and we will by default set it to Franklin. Okay, with that, we can go back to our main menu and to the main menu script and then check for the accept button press. Well, if input is actually just pressed accept, we'll say game config player type is equal to game config uh, player type enum values at current index and that's how we can assign it based on the values of the enum and then here to finish it up we'll say get free or get free change file to scene change scene to file and we'll create new scene so new scene uh, let's see what should be the um, the uh, the main note here uh, I believe also canvas because it's still UI I'm just gonna call this level selection I will save that for now and here I can then provide path or I could use autocomplete here But that's gonna be, let me see, uh, scenes, so that's like res, uh, scenes, level, selection, tscn, right, because this is res, scenes, level, selection, tscn. So let's see whether that works, we should be able to press enter and now gonna open empty scene yep okay so that's our our main menu to select the um, character to play we'll continue with the level selection in the next section okay so let's start working on our level selection screen now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by copying the background node so let's copy and let's paste it here perfect we'll use the very same background i'm also going to copy the vbox container that has um our labels let's copy it here and we will add a marking container here let's drop it down and then let me think um margin container we will also change the theme override here to 16 and let's make it spawn across the screen um, this feels a little bit too big let's see oh it should be right here the background is separate from the margin container we'll change this to choose your level perfect and then we can start working on the uh, levels container so we have that fee box here and here we can add another margin container and then we need to provide uh, the margin here so theme override constants margin top one to eight and margin bottom is gonna be 32 and then we'll add um, the age box container called levels container and we'll start working on our levels each level control will consist of a um, texture rect and a, a label 
uh, wrapped inside of a, a panel. So let's search for panel or panel container. And then let's add texture rect. And let's add label. We'll call this, oops, but that should be a child of level container. Let's call this, um, let's call this level title. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's see. Uh, we would like for it to be in the center and in the center. And this is correct. This is correct. Let's also make it in the center. Center and center. Perfect. Everything is centered. Let's start adding stuff here. So in the assets, in the backgrounds, let's first get the skybox castle. Then basically we can name this castle and we can duplicate this by pressing Ctrl D and that's going to be the forest and then pyramids. And we will change the background respectively. So the forest and oops, the pyramids here. I would like to give those elements a little bit of separation. So let's go to levels container and let's search for separation. This is going to be in theme overrides. I believe I set it to 32. Okay, then about uh, those wonderful uh, about those wonderful titles. Let's make them st stick to the top. So let's find vertical alignment and find string begin. Let's do that here too. And then here. Uh, then what we need to do is add a little bit of overrides to those. So let's select all of the three. Oh, let me see level. Oh, we need to remove that filter. Select all the labels and let's go to theme overrides. Let's change the font. Uh, let's change the font size to be 20. And I would like for it to drop color. So font shadow color, let's enable that. And we'll give them values and this is castle uh, and let's make it in the center uh, let's see also the texture does it matter uh, let's take of nearest here we'll have the forest also make it stick to the center and pyramids 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 i think that's one correct okay and we will start by well, let's leave it as that for now uh, then for the texture rect uh, what we will do is actually we'll use a shader to do something cool. Uh, we will make all of those levels grayed out with a shader. And then once somebody selects given um, level, we'll make it colorful again. Let's select texture rect, go to material, new material, new shader material. Let's click on it shader new shader uh, level selection gd shader okay but like 
every single time i would like to keep some order so let's add a shaders folder and let's stick it there for those of you that don't know shaders are a very, very simple uh, really a very powerful um, programs running directly on G on gpu that are able to transform each and every pixel on stuff that you're seeing on the screen and we will write it the language is um, like separate from gdscript or c sharp it's a special shader language uh, but we will keep it very very simple start by opening up shader editor and if you're not seeing it make sure that you clicked on the shader here and make it pop up so what i would like to do is basically turn every single pixel to some kind of grayscale so let's do this let's write render mode unshaded and then we need a special fragment function and here as you can see the language itself is different because you have the curly braces for the functions we just write color let's first read it from the texture and provide the uv and let's calculate the grayscale gray gray i'm gonna go with gray scale and it's gonna be color dot r you know that the color is in rgb g plus color b divided by 3.0 and also we need a semicolons at the end and then we will say color rgb is equal to vector free from the gray scale Okay, that should work. Uh, let's put the token type void. Mm. Let's see, do I have a typo somewhere? Just say fragment. Let's just token identifier. Unexpected token type void. Uh, let's try this one more time, maybe. Uh, I don't know what's wrong really here. Now uh, let's remove that, delete that shader. Okay, let's clear. Nope, not edit. Uh, let's clear this. Let's remove that. And let's see. A material. I want new shader material. New shader. Let's go to not scenes, but shaders. Save it. Open shader editor. Uh, I believe that's the one now it looks correct and doesn't complain about the void let's try this again render more mode unshaded this is because of the render mode oh i know what was wrong i'm so stupid that's the problem right of course it is okay let's Let's copy this in the GD script. You don't need some icons at the end here. You need those. Okay. So we have that level selection GG shader. Let's make sure that we apply this because now it's a little bit of a mess. That should be in shaders. Oh, that's one empty. Okay, and let's make sure that we only have one, so also delete that. 
let's make sure that we only reference that one shaders yes correct now we can see that as i apply this shader here it's grayed out okay so i can go also here basically i could save that material so let's save it let's create new folder okay and what is important is the extension of the file here it tries to save as dress we save this actually as material so change the extension go to materials and save and then what i can do is just go here into the forest and also say material quick load material and it's grayed out and then here um, material quick load material and it's grayed out too wonderful what we need then is a script so let's go to scripts with new script and we'll need some references here so remove everything class name level selection is all right let's find the panel material which we applied so this is preload and that should be like material level selection material cool uh, let's also we need to create the nodes that we would like to load in so let's create those we're gonna start with empty nodes um that's gonna be like castle level let's save this in scenes then let's create another empty node and that's gonna be a forest level and let's save that and there will be a node called pyramids level and let's also save that in scenes then here we can get the references so already var levels this is equal to preload castle level preload um, pyramids level and preload forest level and also what we need here we will need the references to the panels that we are selecting so already var level panels you can do it very easily by creating unique access modifiers so access unique name access as unique name and access as unique name and then just drag and drop this castle comma forest comma pyramids comma perfect and what we'll do is create the level selection index is equal to zero and we'll create a special function that will allow us to select the level select level level selected index and let's start so what should happen when we select the level we need to find the select panel and what we could also do is indicate the selected panel by adding this cool border so i can go here to my panel and let's see i'd like for it to have a border and a border and to easily switch it and that's gonna require a theme 
Do I remember how to do it? Let's see. Let's create new theme. Uh, let's start by saving it and I'm going to call this level selection dot theme uh, and then we will need to add the proper type variation so here we need to find color container and then add a new style box let's see this is panel and then i can add another one new style box flat Let's see, there's no type variation. Um, and then I could add select it. Okay, and now in this style I can find border. Let's see. And change the color to nice pinkish and then also add the border width of four okay um i can save that as this gonna be style box So panel selected. Okay, let's see. We have that. I'm wondering, do we need to have panel container styles? Need to have type variation. Yes, so we need to add this and then name this selected panel okay and here in the selected panel we just add panel Okay, and we could just quick load panel selected. It's a little bit convoluted, but I hope I did everything correctly. Now, let's see. Selected panel. Styles panel base, it should have the proper base type. Okay, let's see. I hope this will work. Yeah. So, going back to the code, what I want to do is say selected panel theme, um, theme type variation is named selected panel just like we created it's where that works oh and we should run the current scene it doesn't so we call this and nothing happens okay i think one problem that we have is if we go to a panel selected panel we apply the style but here in the base type, we need to find uh, and add panel container. Okay, let's try now. Oh, again, run the current scene. Yes, now it works. So what we're missing is the panel container here. And I believe 
maybe even we don't need that here yeah still working perfect okay cool and also what we will do is we'll find the texture rack of that panel so select the panel get child that's gonna be first child so index zero as texture rect and we will say texture rect material is equal to null and then also we could hide all of those level titles and say select the panel get child at index one as label a levels title label visible is equal to true okay nice okay then what we need is ability to switch and unselect the level so it's a write a function that will happen whenever we change level so unselect level and basically we need to reverse everything we've done so panel is equal to levels panel level index as panel container panel team type variation and to uh, remove it we just pass empty string then we get the access to texture rec so we can basically copy all this and just say material is uh, oh that's named panel now let's switch this to selected panel or maybe because it's not selected anymore right then we just say panel material and here we say false okay so we every we reverse everything we've done in that function with that function and then we just need to monitor um we need to monitor our input and react to it so input if input is action just pressed left we'll say if level select index is equal to zero we return and then we call unselect level with level selected index we we decrease the level and we call select level to new level set index okay um we will do pretty much the same if we move to the right so we can copy this and we'll only change a few things here so let's fix that indentation and here we'll say level panels size minus one return on select level correct correct then plus here and that's pretty much all it should work oh uh, let's run current level what is happening is we don't get the highlight here the border because we did not apply the theme here so let's see um theme uh, quick load and also here theme quick load check it let's check it right now 
still no good. We are still missing something. Let's see. This looks correct. This all should be the same. Uh, this is selected panel. Should this be? No, that looks correct. Mm. Let's see. Panel selected, panel selected, and then here, oh, it doesn't have a fin, interesting. Oh, it should be applied to panel, my bad. Um, let's clear this, let's clear this i apply this to the texture rect but we should apply this to a panel so here quick load and here quick load again not the main scene the current scene okay now it's always applied which is not what we wanted uh let's the problem is I assume here let's clear this um, okay now yeah now it's working okay so it's just a matter of setting the theme correctly cool so we have that, what we need to handle is the enter, which is going to be very simple. Else if input is actually just pressed, accept, get three, change scene to packed, levels, level, selected, index. And with that set, Damn it, I always forget about this. We should be able to, yeah, switch scene. And if we go to remote, you can see that we're choosing parameters level. And if I run it again, and I choose a castle, go to remote. Now it says castle level. So this is working properly. Perfect. We have our level section done and in the next um, tutorial, in the next section, we'll start working on uh, the level. In this section, we'll start working on our level uh, by including uh, the school scrolling background that you've seen in the intro. So let's go to castle level and we will start by creating a new scene uh, that's gonna be 2d scene and i'm gonna name this scrolling background and i'm gonna add five sprites to it so Control a search for sprite 2d and let's switch to 2d and I'm gonna pass the skybox here for a castle. Okay, uh, let's save this in the scene, scenes scrolling background. This is correct. Uh, let's check the position, and that's gonna be two, one, six, uh, three, two, eight. And we also need a scale, gonna be 2.74. Perfect. 
and then basically we can duplicate this and move it along um i think i have the precise values somewhere here so that should be six five one three two eight okay and then the next one is one eight eight three two eight and the next one is one five two eight three two eight and the last one is one nine six six eight and maybe this one should be moved a little bit closer because i can see a gap there so yes and this one oops wrong value so here we need to bring it back a little bit more okay that's good enough the only thing that we need is a simple script that's gonna scroll our background so go to scripts scrolling background create new script um yeah let's add a class name that's gonna be scrolling bg let's export the var bg image this is a texture so that this is reusable um let's change the speed and that's going to be minus 150 and we'll use that variable to cache our children oops that should be just children in function ready we will cache the children by calling get children and then for i in children size we'll say children of i the texture is equal to background image and for i in children size minus one we'll just set the correct position so global position x is equal to children i global position x this is just to make sure that the start of the next sprite is at the same position as the end of the last sprite um so children i texture get width times children i scale x okay that's gonna set up the proper starting position and then we need to move our children respectively with the speed that we configure here so for child in children child global position x is plus equals speed times delta and that's gonna move them but we also need to reset the position when they leave the screen so if child global position x is less than child minus child text sure get with times child scale x child global position x is equal to children back 
global position dot x and that's gonna just take the last element from an array plus um child is not declared in the current scope oh yeah we have to indent this child texture get get with times child scale x okay and then we need to uh as we leave the screen reorganize and reshuffle our child array so that the element that just left the screen pops up at the back so we just what we're doing here basically is have that array of the backgrounds and when given background leaves the screen like this one we just take it change its position and we push it back right and then so now this is now here and then we wait until the next one leaves the screen we take it we pop it back and push it at the end of an array with change position and that's how we achieve this uh, endless scrolling background so um children pop prompt and then children push back child um okay and now we can use this in our castle level and for now what i'm going to do is i'm going to um, instantiate chart scene, scrolling background, perfect, and then you see we have that script, this is all good, um, what I would like to do is find this, this castle level, and make it main scene at least for now so set as main scene let's run this and we have a problem so let's see um attempt to call function git with in base okay Um, let's see. Oh, we probably have to provide the texture here. Uh, so let's tap this. Let's see, the texture is that one. Let's try this again. Yeah, perfect. Now we have that scrolling background. Okay, let's see. We have some kind of error mm, children back global position x plus child texture get with times oh pff, i have no idea what this is it should be just x try this again and we have our scrolling background working so in the next section, we can start working on our player. Let's start working on our player. So I'm going to create new scene. And that's going to be, oops, uh, not that, new scene. And I want to use aria to d as a root. It's gonna be player. Okay, and the things that we need. Um, we will need animated sprite to d. Okay, let's save this in scenes. Animation, sprite frames, new sprite frames. Let's click on those. 
and we will start adding the things that we need so let's search for frankie uh, and we have let's see not the enemies but player where is it okay so to add us we could go to add frames from sprite sheet and we need to find assets player horror game player animations png okay and then the question is can we set those up properly so let's try and find the size definitely they have to be longer but i believe that they are 42 by 42 and let's select uh, all the frames okay and let's see whether we can arrange them properly so let's create new animation and let's call this um run key default see yeah i can just copy and paste them perfect uh, and let's see the configuration it should loop it should have 5 fps perfect let's then create run key shooting and we just copy from default this and this and this can i control click it now okay we have to go one by one so this and this it should not loop i believe that 5 fps is fine let's go to 2d let's play this real quick okay it just like waves a little bit but that's fine and next we will create new animation called this hunter default and then oops hunter shooting go back to default so let's copy this paste it in here copy this and this and remember to disable shooting uh, i mean looping <laughs> Uh, the next one is the which default and which shooting same copy uh, this is our witch I hope it's a witch maybe it's a vampire don't know this and this disable looping and in the end we have to add the uh wolfie default and wolfie shooting okay again copy this is looping this is not looping that's correct um this and this one and it's not looping okay and we have our animation set up uh let's see about the sizes yes we have to increase the size you can achieve that by changing the scale to three perfect and then we need a collision shape collision shape and as we are adding the collision shape uh, what we can do is actually set up the uh, physics layer for stuff that should collide and should not so let's go to project settings general find physics 2d and let's set layers it's gonna be player enemy player projectile and enemy projectile and that's all the layers that we need 
and then we can configure the layer so it exists at the layer one which is player and it should collide with enemy projectile perfect uh, then the only thing that we need to add is the collision shape so we can just use a rectangle and set it in the center it doesn't have to cover everything perfectly this is good enough maybe we can extend it a little bit but that's just fine okay um what we need is actually to add it to our castle level so let's instantiate it and let's bring it in the middle or somewhere around middle and we need to give it ability to move so we have to start writing our code okay uh, oh and i probably i didn't want that because i created it in the scenes by default right yes i want to move it to scripts and i hope i did um scripts Oh no, oh, where is it? player? Here, move it to scripts. And now we can reattach it. So let's just find it here. Yes, load it. Class name, player. Mm, what we will need? We will need a speed. We will need direction. Okay, and then we just need to read the uh, input from the user and then move our player. So input event, if input is action pressed, up, say direction is vector to up that's one way of making stuff move on the screen there are others we could also uh, read the axis or something like that is action pressed down direction vector to down input is action pressed left direction input is oh input is action press right Vector to zero. Uh, yes, and then in process, uh, we can calculate the next position, which is current position. Oh, we don't need that. Okay position plus direction times speed times delta and what we could do is just apply it but there's gonna be one problem with that so let's run this and i can move here just fine the only problem right now is that i can easily just go out of bounds which is not ideal so maybe we should guard the player against it. So uh, let's write a quick simple function called this uh, is within screen bounds and we'll check the next position. That's gonna be vector two. So the aim of the function is to check whether the new position that we would like to apply for our player is within the bounds 
So let's start calculating. First, what we need is half the size. <coughs> and we can get that with uh, our collision shape. So let's grab a reference to this. And I'm going to say collision shape to the shape get wrecked size divided by two and then what we need is a viewport size which is get viewport wrecked size and then we need to do a simple calculation checking the next position so next position y greater than the half size y and next position y plus half size y is less than viewport size y and that handles the y axis we need a little bit more space then let's handle the x axis and next position x is greater than half size x and next position x plus half size um, x is less than viewport size x return true else just return false okay and with that we can simply check if is not within screen bounds i can just call return see how that works um let's see invite operand new and int in operator Oh, why? Okay, I don't know what that was. Okay, and now we're able to prevent the movement of our wonderful player out of viewport size and keep him within the game bounce area. Perfect. Okay. Uh, what we should do in the next uh, section is basically add the ability to shoot uh, for our player and then maybe add a health system for him. Perfect. I'll see you in the next section. Let's carry on working on our player. Um, first thing I would like to do is to actually be able to change our player sprite and animation based on what you've chosen in the character selection screen. And that's going to be rather simple. Um, so what we need is animation prefix or maybe character prefix would be a better name. You can obtain this from game config because we have chosen this so player type keys at game config player type and you can change it to snake case okay and then i can say animate oh we need reference to animate the sprite Okay, now I made the sprite to the uh, play, and we'll use string format here. Default animation prefix, and if you remember, in our game config, we've chosen the default player type to Frankie. So now, if I run castle level. Uh, we should get Frankenstein instead. Let's try this. Perfect. Now, if I change this in game config to Hunter, 
we should get hunter easy um let's carry on uh what we will need we will need mm -hmm, to write a shooting system so let's start by adding a node to d call this shooting system and we are using node to d because i would like to be able to specify where the shots come from and place it like somewhere around here close to the hand of uh, our um, of our player so we have that and then we just need to add a script for that so why well, i don't see it here uh, oh because i've added it here to be of course inside of a player let's try and find this and add this here okay so as we will be building our project uh, our shooting system we will definitely need a projectile so let's add that mm, let's see how do i want to do this okay so we'll create a new scene and we're gonna use aria 2 d we'll call this projectile uh let's save it save it in scenes we'll add a sprite to d um and an example of what we're working with i could find projectile see wolfy projectile okay i believe we need to upscale it so go to transform make it free and i will need to add a collision shape let's use new rectangle and let's make it like that okay maybe we could use a different shape but this is fine for for now and we'll also need a visible on screen not enabler but not a fire okay and with that added we can start working we will add a script so let's find a place for it scripts open create okay let's get rid of everything and i will say last name projectile i'll get the reference sprite to d preferably below and i will also include um, references to the projectiles so let's grab this uh, then there's hunter the witch projectile oh let's okay now it's correct and then of course we need woofy projectile let's define the speed of the projectile and let's also add projectile prefix that we will set already um, based on the projectile prefix we need to decide what sprite texture should we display so let's match for ranking Oh, then Wolfie. Hunter. Uh, 
and reach. Perfect. Uh, the shooting is going to be really simple. Uh, we just need to process delta and update the position. Vector to right times speed times delta. And then we also need to assign it to the proper collision layer so it's player projectile and it collides with enemies cool and also we need to listen for the uh, signal from visible on screen notifier and on screen exited we simply just ue free okay so we have our projectile set up now we can go back to player and start working on our shooting system. Um, so let's add a script. It should be scripts and name it with a snake case shooting system. Okay. Um, we need the reference to project our scene. Let's grab this. And then we need a reference to animated sprite 2D. Okay. Uh, we will need animation prefix. And we'll need a flag that tells us whether we can shoot or not. And we'll process the input listening for that uh, shoot action and checking for the can shoot flag we'll call the shoot function and set the can shoot to false okay then in a shoot function we will instantiate the projectile Uh, I mean, projectile instantiate. We will set the global position for it. Um, and we will set the. How did I call it? Projectile prefix? Projectile prefix. Save this. We'll set the. Where is it? Shooting system projectile prefix is going to be animation prefix, and we'll play animation uh, sprite to D animated sprite to D play, and also we'll again use this string format. Okay, and we'll add this to our root. Okay, um, that's pretty much it. But we also need to listen for when the shooting animation is finished so that we can, <coughs> sorry, re enable the flag. So here in signals, we'll look for animation finished. And we will say, if animated sprite to the animation is equal to, again, string format, shooting animation prefix, then animated, oops, I do not need that. Animate the sprite to D play go back to playing default which as you remember plays on the loop and say can shoot 
true, true. And not declared. Oh, because this is player, uh, we should listen to that. We need to disconnect this, copy this, and we should listen to that in a different place, which is our shooting system. So make sure to select shooting system instead of a player. And I can just um, remove that. Okay, let's see whether we can shoot right now. Okay, we have some errors here. There is no any name any animation with the with the name no shooting. Uh, cool. So that seems like we don't have the uh, animation prefix set up. So let's go to so our animation prefix. This should come from the player. I believe so yes we need to go to player we need to get the reference to shooting system and in the ready we'll say mm, oh this should not happen in process this should happen just once in ready and then also shooting system uh, animation prefix should be equal to animation prefix. Let's try this now. Shooting, yeah. Uh, the only thing that is wrong is the uh, the texture which we're shooting with. So let's see how can we fix that. Um, seems like we're not passing the correct thing to a projectile. There's projectile prefix. Um, projectile. We have projectile prefix here. So let's. Print the back the projectile prefix. And this is Hunter, but for some reason it does not set the proper texture. Let's go to projectile. Sprite to D. What are we missing here? Oh, uh, it's just my mistake. This should be, of course, hunter projectile. Yeah, and now we're shooting. Perfect. So we have our shooting system in place. Um, what else? In the next section, I believe we'll write a simple um, help system that we can apply to our player, and we will add this to that help system to the UI. So I'll see you in the next section. Okay, let's create a simple help system that we'll use for our player. And then let's connect it to UI to display how much health uh, the player has. So I'm gonna start by going to player scene and I will add an empty node. And I'll call this health system. Of course, the word system is like um, a little bit too much here, just simple script, but uh, the naming is pretty good, I believe. But it's not so complex to be called a system. Uh, but then we can go into discussion what the system really is, right? Okay. Um, class name, health system, uh, and we'll exp 
export var health set it to 20 uh, and there's gonna be only one function called damage and we'll take the damage taken by any means health is minus equal damage taken and we'll have two signals here and if you don't know what signal is it's just a glorified uh, observer pattern basically it is a way for us to tell that something happened uh, some kind of event, event happened in our game and then the other scenes or the nodes can listen to that, to that signal to be informed about those events. So if we're uh, getting damaged, we'll just emit information about being damaged. And then if health is less than equal zero, we'll emit the signal about dying perfect um health okay with that we can plug that in into our player script so let's start by getting the reference oh i would like to have it here please okay and we can cast this but it doesn't really matter um, let's see um i will add one simple function here that's gonna actually help us a little bit the function get health we we'll just plug into health system health perfect and then on working with our ui i would like to keep the ui data and the player data kind of separate but I will use um, a node existing in the level to basically glue the UI and the player. So going back to castle level, I'm going to add a simple script here. I'm going to call this something like level manager. I only really like the name manager because what does it mean to, to manage, but I think this is fine. Uh, let's add a script, make it snake case. Okay. And we will get the reference to apply player. Okay. That's good enough for now. And then we'll also create UI. So go to new scene. We'll use canvas layer. Uh, and I'm gonna I'm going to rename this to UI and then save this as UI. Okay. Uh, let's see what do we need in here. Um, we will need the information about our health. So let's start by adding the margin container. Okay. Let's make it span across the whole screen. And in this margin container, let's uh, the theme overrides so eight 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 and i will need a health container so let's add this is gonna be vertical box container uh, let's stick it to top and here um alignment begin and i don't think we need anything else here what we could do is change the name to health container and we can access as a unique name and then we'll need to add the script so let's go to scripts ui create okay um let's get rid of everything let's provide a class name and let's get the reference to health container and then I would also like to have the reference to the to the live uh, textures, and we have live full and live half, um, so we can use both of these. Let's get the references to those. And if you don't know, I'm just dragging 
into the script and holding control dropping and now i have the references okay and i will create a function that's gonna initiate the help i'm gonna call this set initial health and we will need to do some calculations so basically uh if we have like 10 health will display uh, five full uis if we have like nine health will display um four full hearts and then a half of a heart so basically full heart is counted as a health of two and then half ui life health ui is like a half of one so let's do some calculations here full health textures this is health divided by two and i can say 4i in full health textures we need to dynamically create a texture rect texture rect texture is a live full ui texture rect texture filter we need to set this to rest okay and health container add uh child texture rect Okay, and then we need to um, see whether we need to add a um, Half-Life texture, Half-Life, cool game. Um, so, Half-Life texture, it's gonna be Health Modulo 2. If Half-Life texture is not equal to zero, We'll just create half life texture rect, which is texture rect new. And then we need to set the health, um, sorry, half life texture. We need to set the texture properly. Uh, set the filtering so texture filter and that's the same and also add it to health container um, half texture half life texture rect okay and that's basically it for now so we can go back to castle level to level manager and then in our level manager um i'm going to call ready and say ui oh we need to get the reference to the ui of course so let's instantiate UI here and get the reference. I can say set, um, where is my set initial health to player get uh, health. Let's see whether that works. Not really a non-existent function add child in base nil um half-life texture let's see texture direct is an object so this is nil but why
Oh, I think I know why. Because the matter of the nodes now three matters. So we need to load UI first and then load uh, level manager. Okay, pretty good, uh, but they're stacked the wrong way. Uh, so let's see. I use the VBox container and I need to use HBox container, of course. Okay, yeah, and now we have 10 health. And if I go to player and change the health system to be 11. Uh, that still doesn't work. Maybe now. Yeah, now I have uh, five and a half hearts. So we have our health system in place. It is time for us to start working on our enemies. And what I would like to do is uh, have a different kind of enemies, but managing them with just one script. And to do that, we will use resources. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating a new folder. I'm going to call this resources. Okay, and then what we need actually is um, like an enemy config script that would allow us to configure different, uh, configure different uh, enemies based on some properties. So let's start by creating a new script. And I'm going to call this enemy config. Uh, let's open it up and it's going to extend the resource, we'll add a class name, uh, and then config, and then we'll export some variables. So projectile collision shape, maybe rectangle shape 2D. Export var projectile texture. It's going to be texture 2D. Export var enemy name, which is going to be like unique identifier. And export var enemy collision shape rectangle shape 2D. Uh, perfect. With that configuration done, we can um, create our enemies and we'll be having three of those. Let's create a resource of type resource. Um, this is going to be devil enemy config. Then we will duplicate those and call this mummy enemy config duplicate oops duplicate that again and we'll call this devil and then uh, no we have devil uh skeleton enemy config and all we need to do right now is click on each of those use quick load find the enemy config and here we can apply our properties so uh, for the devil uh, we can Quick load and we should find we should find nothing. Mm, let me see. Okay, so I pre-prepared some uh, collision shapes uh, so that we don't have to do it. So you can find these in um, in in in. Uh, resources collision shapes it's all going to be in the repository so let me just find it and add it uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. so let's just bring those collision shapes in and this is a set just of resources right with the size 
provided for projectiles and for uh, the sprites of the enemies. So going back to devil enemy config, I can say quick load and that's projectile shape. Then we have projectile texture. So quick load and that's going to be like, I believe fireball. Enemy name is devil. Enemy collision shape, uh, also quick load devil collision shape. So that's the first configuration. For the mummy, also let's apply the script. Um, enemy config. And now I can start adding stuff. So, mummy projectile. Projectile texture is bandage. Yes. Enemy is mummy. And quick load mummy collision shape. And then skeleton the same uh, ch -ch 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 enemy config projectile skeleton projectile then quick load bone i believe i call this yes bone skeleton and quick load the skeleton collision shape perfect so we have our configuration. Now it will be time to actually use it. And uh, we will use this by, and we'll manage our level by creating waves of enemies. And after you beat each and single wave of enemies, you will be moved to fighting the boss. So first thing that we need to do is actually let's go to castle level let's add an empty node um, and I'm going to call this wave one so what we'll have is we'll have a set of nodes nodes representing wave and then we can easily configure how many waves we'd like to have in a level and then we'll have another node that will be managing those waves um, we'll call this wave spawner or something like this and this um this node will be responsible for um managing uh spawning the enemies and reading from the wave configurations um yes so i'm gonna just create a script here let's go to scripts and i'm going to call this wave and then it's not going to have too much code. It's going to be more of a, a configuration for the wave. So class name, wave, and let's export group, call this enemy configs. And here we will provide the references to the configs that we just created. devil config is a resource mummy config is a resource um skeleton config is all config also a resource and we can then just close that group by exporting uh empty string and there's gonna be Another group here. Here we can define how many enemies we would like to have each uh, of given type for that wave. So group enemy counts of our devils count export of our mummy count export var skeleton count and export group mpra and then we also need to define uh, how fast we'd like to spawn the enemies so export var time between enemy spawns this is a float and i'm going to set this to 2.5 seconds 
okay, uh, with that set up, we should create the wave spawner. So let's create new scene, use aria 2D. Mm, let's see. We will of course need a collision shape. Uh, and we will need a wave spawn timer. So timer, wave spawn timer. Cool. Um, we will need to add the shape. For that, let me see, I have the values right here. It's gonna be new rectangular shape and the size is 168 and uh, 646. Perfect. And now we can just change the name to wave spawner, save it uh, in scenes. And we also need to add a script, but first let's add this to a castle level. And let me tell you how this is going to work. So we have a wave spawner and we can move waves into it, right? Um, so these are now children of the wave spawner and inside of wave spawner we'll create a script that's gonna read from those children and read the configuration. So here, uh, let me provide the configurations here uh let me quick load and let's search for config um let's see so devil config the mummy config and the skeleton config and we need to provide this here too so devil mummy and Skeleton. And as you can see, what is cool here is that we can easily manipulate those waves by adding uh, more configs, adding more counts, changing the time between spawns. Okay, let's create our wave spawner script. And let's do some coding. Um, let's get rid of everything. Create the class name wave spawner and I'm gonna create an enum representing the type of the enemy. So that's a devil mummy skeleton. And we'll need two signals here. Waves finished to know when to trigger the boss battle, and then starting wave um, to inform the UI about which wave of how many starting. So wave index and total number of waves. Okay, uh, let me think what else do we need? Oh, we need the way to tell the enemies because we don't have the enemy script yet but we need to find a way to tell the enemies how should they move. So let's go to castle level and I need a new node here. Let's call this enemy movement points. And what we will do is we'll just define some points on the screen between our enemy should move and it will choose random point and move to it. Um, you could do so much more sophisticated approach to enemy movement, like you know, move them in a circle, front and back, do some strange cut patterns, but defining these points, it should be rather easy uh, to understand. I'll just add some markers. Uh, let's take that and for example that's gonna be like top left marker then I'm gonna place like top right marker 
duplicate and that's going to be mid left so let's move it to the middle somewhere around here then let's do mid right marker move it here uh then we have oh that's that could be lower actually mm, that's gonna be bottom left and then bottom right perfect so our wave spawner should have a reference to the enemy movement points so let's do export enemy movement points and that's an array of node to d and then in a wave spawner here i should be able to define those right right but let's see this is available here but it also should be available here if i just say script empty uh, wave spawner okay now it's good you can save resource to empty path provide non-empty path or a resource with non-empty path this feels like some kind of error uh, and i wonder why is this because of the shader yes um can i just no no no, no. i don't want to delete this i want to delete Uh, okay, let me just try and I will try to restart the Godot. Okay, that helped. As you can see, those unsaved shaders here are now removed. So we don't shouldn't have any more problems here. Um, let's see. Let's just open that. And, that, and I don't want this to be at top. Okay. Now I can go to castle level and provide enemy movement points. I know that we're using six of those and let's start assigning them. So top left, top right, mid right, mid left, and the order doesn't really matter. Bottom left, bottom right. So we have that handled. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else do we need? Uh, we are in our wave spawner. We have enemy movement uh, points. Uh, we will need enemy scene, but it's going to be in a second. We need wave uh, spawn timer. So let's grab this. And... Um, with collision shape okay and then we need to provide information about the time between waves so we have a time between we have time between uh spawn of each given enemy even in a wave but then we also need information about um time like the pause between the waves so time between waves and i'm going to set this to three seconds Let's see, we need an array of enemy types that we can spawn. This is enemy type devil, enemy type mummy, enemy type skeleton. Uh, we need reference to waves, so we'll start this as an empty array. The current wave 
we need enemy pound and we need something called initial waves count all right uh let's see uh ready function we will get the reference of children here and then we need to filter out the children that are not the waves because we have children like timer and collision shape right here but then also remember that we're only interested when it comes to managing the waves with those children uh those waves that we're providing separately so we have to filter out basically everything that's not a wave and we can do that rather easily because we can say for child in children if is instance of and you can say if child is a wave then the waves append child okay and then we can get the initial waves count which we will need for our ui and that's gonna waves size uh, and then we need to do wave wave uh spawn timer timeout connect to on spawn timeout and we need to initiate wave scout i mean initiate um next wave that's a better name so we need those two functions on spawn timeout pass for now and then uh initial initiate initiate yeah that's more correct initiate next wave and we'll also pass for now cool um let's see let's start with initiate next wave uh we will do what we need to do is reset the enemy types each time we uh start the next wave because what we'll do with that array we'll just plug the correct count from that array and then remove any element from that array that reaches zero so basically we'll spawn the enemies randomly but we will respect the amount of the enemies that we should spawn based on the wave configuration and the available types so enemy types just reset that and then we will say current wave waves pop front and we can just say pass wave um and then starting wave we could emit that signal with initial waves count minus waves size and then initial waves count so that's going to give us information for our ui on which waves are we is it like one of two or two of two or three of five and so on then enemy count so how many enemies do we have to spawn current wave devils count plus current wave skeleton count plus current wave mummy count and then wave spawn timer wait time is equal to current wave time between enemy spawns and we can start the timer perfect we have that handled so we now need to actually spawn the enemies um, on the timeout. So let's see, enemy to spawn 
we'll just get enemy types and pick random. We'll find the spawn point and the spawn point is going to be the random point in our uh, collision shape, right? So anywhere here, the enemy can spawn, right? And if you take a look, we have to place the wave spawner probably somewhere here. So now we know where the enemy should spawn. Bring it a little bit higher. This, uh, this is correct, this is fine. Okay, going back to script. So um, this is going to be vector two of Randy range from, that's gonna be, uh, I'm gonna do, hmm, I'm gonna get a shape by calling collision shape to D, or even I'm gonna get shape rect by calling collision shape 2d shape get rect and then i can say uh rect position x and then um the other argument is rect and x does the first value for the x uh, axis and for y axis we do pretty much the same so basically i can just copy this and that's going to be position y and and y uh rect shape rect is what i wanted to use perfect done and now we need to write, uh, we need to write our spawn match. So we'll be matching on the enemy to spawn type. So match enemy to spawn. If enemy type is devil, If current wave devil's count is greater or equal one, current wave devil's count minus equals one. Then we'll create special spawn function. We'll pass the spawn point enemy enemy type enemy to spawn sorry enemy to spawn and current wave devil config and after that we check if current wave devils count is equal to zero and if it is then we will remove the devil type from um from enemy types okay and yeah we'll need that uh, spawn function let's create that so that's gonna be uh spawn point which is vector two enemy type which is enemy type and enemy config and we'll pass for now okay and with that we can carry on so now for the mummy let's add an enter here to give us a little bit more space um mummy count oh and we need to bring then this yes Mummy count, it's mummy and mummy config. Okay, and the same goes for our skeleton. Let's copy, paste this.
and skeleton config. Perfect. Uh, we have that. Then we need to check whether to uh, where we should stop spawning our wonderful enemies. So if current wave is equal to zero and mummy out is equal to zero and current wave devils count is equal to zero uh just stop the timer right okay and for now in our spawn function we will just print debug uh, enemy type and let's see where this is working So, yeah, we have that information two, one, and maybe zero, and then again the next pick two, zero. Yeah, so they're picked at random. Perfect. So, uh, this is how we can spawn our enemies in waves, and in the next section, we'll work on the enemy itself. It is finally time to handle our enemy scene and script. So let's create new scene, other node, choose aria to d as a root node. Let's name this enemy. Um, and what do we need is animated sprite. And we will create new animation sprite frames uh, and we'll create our animations here so um, let me see let's go to assets and here we have enemies and we're looking for mummy okay so we can start adding this uh, let's add devil default then we have devil shoot then we have um, mummy default um, mummy shoot Skeleton default and skeleton shoot and also die. Uh, let's start with devil default. So devil, devil idle. It should loop 5 FPS is fine. Then uh, devil shoot. Is the same oops it's the same but it's not looping uh, let's save that scene very important and let's go back then we have a die and this is quite different because we have um, 20 FT FPS not looping and we just bring every single one of smoke FX here and here we go that's how our enemy will look like when he gets hit right it's just a simple smoke explosion as he evaporates uh, bump the scale to three uh, then mummy let's find this mummy idle and mummy shooting remember to disable the loop the same for skeleton just here idle is looping and Skeleton shoot is not. Okay, we have that set up. We'll need a collision shape. And we can just create anything here because we'll override it very soon with the, 
collision shape we have from the configuration. Um, then we will also need a marker 2D. Uh, marker 2D. Uh, and the position of the marker is minus 99. And we also will need a timer and that's gonna be our shooting system so let's start by adding the uh shooting timer uh, so let's find the timer and we will actually add a script here because we will randomize it so let's add a script go to scripts folder and i will call this random timer it's very simple to create let's get rid of everything class name uh, is gonna be random timer uh, we'll export meal time and i'm gonna set this to one and then we'll export max time and set it to two I'm not ready, we'll go set up and we'll call this periodically as we need. So var random time is run range from mean time to max time. So we just are picking any random time from that range. We set the wait time to random time and we call start. Um, and we will, this is all correct. We don't need, oh, we set it to one shot because we will retrigger it manually. Okay, and then for our shooting system, we will need enemy projectile. So let's see. Enemy projectile. Um, we need to create this because we don't have it, right? No, we don't. Okay. Scene. New scene. Again, area to D. Uh, we will need a sprite. To D, uh, we will need a collision shape and we will need visible on screen notifier. Change the name to enemy projectile. Um, and let's save this. Perfect. For the collision, make sure that the layer is correct. So this is enemy projectile and it can collide with layer. Mm, and visible on screen notifier we will plug into that uh, let's add something that represents the um, projectile so for example bandage do we need to transform it yes we do so set it free collision shape does not matter but let's add something here so that the editor editor does not complain this is fine, and we'll need to add the script. Okay, so this is going to be pretty cool because um, I would like to change this a little bit and make the projectile go in a different way than just straight ahead, right? And to do that, we could use curves, we could to some calculations but i'm going to rely on mathematical functions and uh, mainly uh, the um, mainly the uh, functions uh, from the trigonometry so we need some references that's going to be reference to collision shape and to sprite 2d and then let's define enum projectile pattern and we'll have few of these that's gonna be linear sinus acosinus 
Hakusin's H, Tan H, and that's it for now. Um, let's see. Um, okay, and then we can just say export group shooting params pattern which is of type projectile pattern and this is projectile pattern singles for example uh, horizontal speed vertical speed I'm not sure whether we need that vertical speed now we just need um, vertical speed and horizontal speed sorry and amplitude for our uh, sine wave mm, and y direction set this to minus one okay let's start by creating some functions so set projectile texture Right to the texture is projectile texture. Um, what else? Oh, we can already plug into the notifier. So screen exited, connect here, um, and we just do U three. Okay. Then to actually move our um, our wonderful projectile, we will use process. So x can be calculated as global position x minus delta times horizontal speed. But then to get the y position, we need to use, of course, the previous global position. But we will write a function called get vertical position we'll pass x and delta and then we'll just set position to vector to x and y and now we'll write that function to uh to use our movement pattern so get vertical position it's x position which is float and delta which is float okay and you can match the pattern uh, pattern and uh, if this is projectile pattern sin represents the sinus we could just use the sin function to return delta times x position times pi divided uh, times sorry two divided by amplitude okay and you can write the rest of those functions for any type that we would like to add you could also add uh, here like some kind of other mathematical expression so but i'm gonna just present a few pattern for project oh sorry uh we are matching not using ifs so projectile pattern a cosinus is equal to a cosinus and basically we add the same stuff um, times y direction This is return uh, cos h delta times x position times phi times 2 divided by amplitude times y direction. Um, then we have projected pattern tan h um, 
which is return pan h uh, delta times x position times pi times 2 divided by amplitude uh, and if we have linear um, pattern which is the simplest one we have linear uh, we just return zero because we're not moving uh, in the y axis and that's pretty much it we have the projectile pattern now we need to go back to enemy uh, and write our shooting system so let's add a script mm, and this is enemy shooting system let's go to scripts file name enemy shooting system mm, hello uh, what no, no 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 we want to create this in scripts Okay, perfect. Other class name. We will signal every time we shoot. Uh, we will get the and then projectile scene. So let's create the reference here. We'll get the reference to random timer. Okay, and let's cast this. And we need a from we'll get that from the enemy config. The collision shape and projectile texture. And we basically need to connect to timeout of our timer. Note timeout mm, connect. So we'll just create the projectile. And this is enemy projectile instantiate as enemy projectile. Add it to the tree. Projectile. And we need to set the texture. We need to set the shape, projectile, texture, collision, shape, to the shape. We need to set the global position, so projectile, global position is equal to global position and then we also need to cool we need to restart the timer so set up and emit the information about shot cool so we have the shooting system now we can finally go to our enemy. Uh, let's add a script in script folder. Get rid of everything. Start with the class name. We need a signal about when the enemy gets killed to update our uh, wave spawner. Uh, let's see. And we need some references. So reference to the shooting system, reference to the sprite 2D, reference to a collision shape, and the reference to a shooting timer. And we'll also have the movement points here that we prepared earlier. And then we need um, 
default animation name and shooting animation name let me think what else do we need okay we will need current movement point so where are we moving our enemy I will create init function instead of using ready just because we can pass config here and we can pass enemy movement points here perfect okay so default animation name oops default animation name this is present s default and get the config enemy name that's why we added it to match the uh animations in animation animated sprite then shooting animation name to percent s shoot percent config enemy name and you can say sprite animated sprite play default animation name we can assign the movement points we can assign the collision shape okay then we need to find the first point to move our enemy to so random point is equal to movement points pick random uh, and set the current movement point to random point okay so we have the movement set up then we need to configure everything um, when it comes to signal and shooting system so Shooting system, shot, this is the signal that we should have, connect on shot. Let's create that function and make it pass for now. Then shooting system, projectile texture is equal to config projectile texture shooting system a projectile collision shape is equal to config projectile collision shape and i believe that's it oh we should also plug into i made this prime animation finished okay and yeah um on shot we should call animated sprite to d play uh shooting animation name and let's see on animation finished if I need to spread to the animation if we died then we should emit the killed signal because we got killed uh, and we should QE free and if sprite if animated sprite to the animation is equal to if we finish the shooting animation go back to sprite to the play default animation name okay that's well a lot but i believe that should enable us to spawn the enemy so go back to wave spawner and let's spawn the enemy let's see uh var enemy 
is equal to enemy. Oh, we need the reference to enemy scene. Yep. So let's bring this enemy TSCN. I can say enemy instantiate. Uh, and we will <laughs> we'll add child enemy to connect to enemy killed signal create that function and make it pass We'll call enemy init with enemy config and enemy movement points. And now you can see how it all connects. And we'll say enemy position is equal to spawn point. And on enemy killed, we'll get to enemy count and decrease it by one. And we'll check if enemy count reached zero. And if so, we'll progress to next wave. Oh, let's write the function. Progress to next wave. And make it pass. And that was a lot. And let's see whether we can get something on the screen. Maybe there will be some errors that we need to fix right away castle level make it run and let's see where some enemy okay we have an enemy that pops up to the screen but we also get an error uh, and the problem is that that shouldn't be projectile texture that should be projectile itself try this again okay we have Okay, and it shoots, and you can see that they're all shooting, they're all in the random locations. Perfect. Okay, so we get our bullet hell kind of going. The one thing we don't have is our enemy moving. And this is, of course, a slight oversight on my part, because we need to move our enemy. Uh, so let's use the process delta global position is equal to global position move toward current movement point delta times speed and then we need a conditional to actually make our uh, enemy move to the next point oh we don't have a speed defined that's embarrassing uh yeah let's let's do this uh, export speed let's say 250 now we have it so we need to know the distance between our enemy and his destination and if it's low enough we'll just switch to the next point that should be simple we'll go with global position distance we could do distance 2 or distance square 2 and it's easier to get the, it's more efficient to get distance squared to, or like if you get to the computation, this method runs faster than distance two. Okay. Uh, and since we don't need the precise value, we can go with a distance squared to, and we will say current movement point, and it has to be lower than point one. And in that case, we'll just reassign current movement point and we will just do pick random global position position and now our enemies should move uh, okay invite um, type in faction move toward cannot convert argument one uh, yes and this is my fault because 
current movement point random point that should be the um the position of course let's try this again so you spawn an enemy and invite global position why this could be invalid Um, movement points, pick random, it should have a position, that's a typo, let's try this again, okay, so we have our wonderful skeleton moving and shooting at us, even more, and now we should get a devil, perfect! So we have our enemies working and in the next section we should work on actually um, making the interaction between the, the enemy and the player and the health system. So basically make the collisions and everything work. In this section we'll try to make our projectiles actually interact with our game. Okay, so we will start by the enemy. So go to enemy, select the root area to D. And here in the node, I would like to listen to area entered. So connect. And here we can start working. So let's check. We know that um, because we set up our layers correctly, we know that our enemy can only collide. Oh, we did not. Uh, so this should be enemy and should collide with player projectile. So we know that this is the only possible uh, collision. So we know that the area is going to be the projectile. Okay. So we we'll need to um, do a few things to not get shot twice uh, because we're playing that um, die animation, I will disable the collision. So set collision layer value to, to false. We have to disable the shooting. So we need to, what we can do, we could go to shooting system and just get the stop function going and that's gonna just do timer stop so shooting system stop and then we need to set the process to false because i would like to disable all movement i will also do sprite animated sprite play die and aria qe uh, qe3 and that should enable us to um to destroy the enemy once he gets shot so let's see uh, i'm trying to shoot him okay yeah perfect Cool, so we are able to destroy our enemies. Um, let's see, and we should also, of course, QE3. Um, and before that, we should emit killed. Okay, so now we are done when it comes to the projectile and name interaction. But then we have also enemy projectile. And here I would also like to have some interaction. So area entered, connect. And here I would like to basically QE free and call area QE free so that the enemy shots can be destroyed by our shots. 
Okay, and let's see. And let's wait for the enemy and his shot. Okay, this is probably due to the fact that we did not set the collision layers. So three and two. Oh, this is enemy and also enemy projectile. And then we need to go to enemy projectile. Also configure it here. So player projectile. Let's try this now. Okay, now I am able to destroy the enemy projectiles with my own projectiles. Perfect. Uh, then we need the integration between the enemy projectile and player's health. So we need to go to player and we will see we interact with enemy projectile. That's correct. So on area entered. We need to call a few things here. So health system damage by one. Let's see. Do we have we also need to have some signals here player damaged uh, with current health which is going to be int and then signal player died okay so we can just call um player damaged emit get health I uh, will disable the area so destroy the projectile and I would like also to give a little bit of visual confirmation that we've got hit so we'll do blink twin get three create twin Bing twin twin property animated sprite to D modulate will basically make the player blink red. So color red uh, point twenty five for the duration, and then we will do blink twin chain to play the next twin after the previous one is finished. Uh, also pretty much the same so we can just copy that but we'll bring back to the standard color which is white mm. and I think that's almost it but we also need to health system died connect on died and if we die, what do we do? We emit the player died signal and we just give it free. Okay. Now I should be able to be shot and blink yeah perfect but as you can see ui is not yet updating the amount of lives left so we have to do this uh, that probably should exist in our level manager uh, so uh, let me think um okay the information that we need here let's see player uh player well, we can cast this to player probably and i don't know what that artifact was but it's gone uh, let's cast this to player then player damaged and we can connect it to on player 
damaged. What I will do is I'm going to write a simple function here um, on player damaged current health, which is int UI decrease health current health. And we need to go to UI. and add that function. Mm, so decrease health. Uh, and it takes current health. Uh, that's a complicated word. Okay. Let's see. That's going to be rather simple because we just do health textures uh, is equal to um, mm, 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 mm. health textures. Do we need even? Oh, we need current health. Yeah. Um, it's going to be health container get children. If current health and actually that approach right here is rather simplified because we assume that we decrease the health by one but this is the simplification that I'm willing to live with like if we would take if we were to take like free damage that function not gonna display the UI properly but as a homework you can you can extend that function to do just that i'm going to just say health textures pop back qe free so i'm just getting the last self texture and changing the qe free on that else we just need to change a texture so health textures back texture life half ui and you can see the difference between pop back and back here pop back actually gives back given element from array and also removes it from an array and this just gives the um gives the element from an array so if we go to the documentation by holding control there's a pop back removes and returns the uh last element of the array and then back return the last element of the array without removing it okay um let's see that should work already okay yeah and now we should lose another heart perfect 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 okay um let's check can we die just disappear right yeah and we're gone perfect um okay so this is the interaction between the projectiles and the rest of the systems in our game the next is actually to display the uh very simple ui that we'll create for the waves in the next section of course In this section, we will add a very simple wave counter to inform our user how many waves uh, he or she has left. So let's add a child node. It's going to be simple label for wave counter. Uh, let's see. Let's see how should we position this. I believe uh, top and center should be fine. Um, let's go to inspector and we're going to say wave one of two. I will change the font, of course. Let's quick load this. 
and for the size uh, i believe we can use 32 and that's pretty much it now we just need to write a code to interact with it so let's get the reference to wave counter and then what we'd like to do is get a function called on wave started current wave total waves and if you remember sections ago we already have uh, the signal for that to get our data let's use format string and here we have to provide our arguments in an array so current wave total waves and then it's just a matter of uh, calling that in the right place and since this is the interaction uh, between uh between our ui and other systems we'll write this in level manager uh so let's see uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. uh that should be somewhere here on waves finished so let's go to wave spawner starting initiate next wave uh, we emit that signal right so we should listen to it in uh, uh, level manager let's see level manager so um also we need the reference to wave spawner here of course okay and then i can say wave spawner starting wave connect and i could write a function here to do that but basically what we're doing is just we're uh, passing all the data and uh, all the references to the function that exists in the UI script. So I can just call UI on wave started like that. And I'm not calling it here. I'm just passing reference, of course. And just to te test this, uh, I'm going to go to UI and change the text here to zero. And let's run our game. And it says already wave one of two. Let's see whether I can get to wave two without dying. And it's not so easy. One of two. There are still some skeletons to fight. Okay. And. And we don't have a code to progress to the next uh, wave, right? Uh, ch -ch 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 wave, oops. Wave spawner. Yeah, we don't have this. Okay, uh, we need to add this, obviously. Uh, so if wave's uh, size is equal to zero, we just do waves finished emit else we will just do initiate next wave and to make it easier to test i can just go to castle level and decrease the amount of stuff i would like to have here uh, so let's do one zero zero Okay, and now we have wave two of two, and it should have only one enemy, or maybe actually two. 
Oh yeah, there will be more because I can see this is not a bug, but this is pretty much done. Now we finish both waves. Um, so now what is left for us to do really is to start worrying about uh, our boss fight. We will start working on this in the next section. Okay, moving on to our big uh, boss fight. Um, we need to go to level manager and listen for the waves. Uh, can we get some autocomplete here, please? Waves finish. And here we will basically spawn our boss. So we need to create a new scene. I will call that scene. We're gonna use Aria 2D and we'll call this uh, Vlad boss. So let's save this and we'll add a script to it. okay um and we will need animated sprite 2d and we'll need new sprite frames and we'll bump the scale to three let's switch to 2d context and let's start working on this <clears throat> so we need to find the sprites and here we go so um default is gonna be vlad idol one and two a loop then we will add a new one that's gonna be um blocking because he will be able to block our shots so one and two and that's also going to loop then new one is going to be shooting blood shooting one blood shooting two and that's not going to loop and there's also another one i would like to add and this is teleport and we'll just add everything from the smoke effects okay and we'll disable looping um let's see teleport I believe we can change this to 20 fps perfect so let me think um this is the default one we will need the collision shape of course So I believe rectangular shape is good enough. Something like that. Okay. Now we will I need more stuff here, so let me think. Mm. We can just add an empty node and we will call this health system and we can reuse the script that we already have. Let's go to scripts and health system. Perfect. Uh, we need the shooting point. So marker 2D. Okay, and let's place it somewhere around here. Uh, and also we need an action timer. So search for random timer and we have that here because we wrote it already. I'm gonna look this action timer and I'm gonna set it between two and three. 
and for now that's all and we can go back to our wave spawner i mean our level manager level manager and decide what to do when waves are done so we need a reference to the flat boss scene so let's see we have that and we should of course instantiate it let's add it to the root and we need to define a few things here vlad boss will need to pass it lower position and i think that i have a values for that here um we will need to provide him with the uh, movement points this enemy i'd like to have a reference to movement points here so do just that and say enemy movement points get children we'll probably need some kind of init function and let's already yeah that should be already it to go back to Vlad boss and let's start adding everything that we need to make him work and that's gonna be a lot actually <clears throat> so we need a signal for Vlad damage with his current health we need a signal for Vlad died um and we will need a lot of references to other scenes uh let's see let's define the speed for now and points and we need of course current movement move meant point and our boss will have two phases okay we'll define the actions that he can perform so he can either spawn the devil as his minion do the homing uh, shot that will direct itself towards the player or do spray shot something like that okay um the current phase is gonna be phase one we need some references let's open his scene and now we need some references so reference to a health system a reference to a shooting point a reference to animated sprite 2d and a reference to an action timer okay let's see let's start with that init function and let's make him move to random point position uh, health system damaged connect and damaged and health system died connect on died action timer has to be set up oops 
that's it for now we need those functions so on diet blood diet emit and on the matched um blood damaged emit with current health and then we need to handle his movement which is pretty much the same that we had in the other enemies and so process delta global position global position move toward current movement point delta times speed and then check if global position distance squared to current movement point is less than 0.1 if so current movement point is movement point pick random global position okay that should be enough for him to move he's not making any actions yet but let's see whether this is uh, working um to simplify everything let's go to castle level and let's give one enemy here and one enemy here to make everything faster to test and where's my enemy okay here here he comes and wave two of two perfect so the waves are working mom please die okay and we have vlad moving on our screen perfect so this is initial setup for our boss and we'll handle the phase one and his actions in the next section first thing i would like to add in this section is to make uh, the ui display for our boss and also make him actually demergeable so let's go to our black box scene and let's make sure that he exists on the enemy layer and he can collide with player projectile that should be enough mm, let's see we are emitting blood damage so and blood died so we can go to level selection uh, oh i mean level manager script and set up those um those signals uh let's see uh okay so um we need here vlad boss vlad damage signal to connect to on vlad damaged with vlad boss uh vlad died signal to connect on vlad died uh, and then we can uh, let's see we can just call funk on vlad died that's gonna be ui on vlad died so basically we don't need to create that function as i mentioned before i can just do this uh, and here i can do ui it's gonna be change um boss health bar value and also when we spawn him i would like to call 
UI init uh, boss health bar and we can call Vlad boss get health. So we need to add all of these functions. Let's go to Vlad boss first and let's get the get health function going, which is going to be return health system uh health okay and then we need to go back so we need to add <coughs> sorry on blood tight and in boss health bar and ui change boss health bar so let's open ui scene and we'll start adding all of those definitions now we'll just make them pass. Um, we need on blood tight. And we need uh we need the one to initiate. In need boss helper okay and i'm really sorry if i'm bubbling a little bit but i've been recording the whole day and it's really late right now but i am determined to finish it today okay going back to our ui scene we need to set everything properly so let's go to our margin container and we will just add child node progress bar let's stick it to the bottom uh, do not show the percentage um, we probably need to configure a layout for it uh, so let's see, custom minimum size is 24 and then we need to change the um, background. So theme overrides, um, styles, uh, this is fill style, new flat style, let's make it uh, red, something like this is going to be okay. Um, we don't need anything else, but we also need a label. And I'm going to call this boss name. And I'm going to call this boss health bar. So I can also make it stick to the bottom and center. And I think I can just name this Vlad mm, but also need to change the font okay this is looking pretty good I think so with all of that set up I can go back to coding Uh, let's see, we'll not handle on Vlad died yet. Uh, we'll change the boss health bar value. So new value is set to... Oh, we need the references, of course. So boss health bar. So boss health bar. A value is equal to new value and that should be it um, eat boss health bar that's gonna be a little bit more complicated so max health is in what I will do is I will just hide those two at the start because at the very start we are not in the boss battle so then I need the reference to the boss name label then I can just say, uh, I think boss name should be visible. Uh, 
Pause health bar should be visible. Pause health bar max value is max health. Boss health bar value is uh, max health. And we'll also change the wave counter text to say boss fight. Okay. Mm, let's see whether all of this works. Okay. We fight. Wave one, wave, wave two, and we have Vlad, boss fight, perfect. Everything seems correct. Now we need to make our boss um, damageable. So let's see. We go to Vlad boss and let's open the scene. And we'll need to connect to Aria entered. Then I'm just gonna say uh, health system um, damage one. Also, are we connected to? Yes, we are connected. So we don't need to do anything else here. But I would also like to give this uh, slide visual confirmation that our shot landed. So blink twin uh, create twin. Blink twin in property of animated sprite 2d modulate color red uh, 0.25 blink twin chain again twin the very same property so we can basically copy this one but change the color to white. Okay. And then are we connected to diet? Yes. So in the level, level manager, um, UI on Vlad died. What do we have there? For now, we can just print Vlad died. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, let's see. There's something wrong. Let's try this again. No. Okay, here's our first enemy. I could probably maybe I could disable all those okay can we damage him okay that's that's not what I wanted so we have some errors here um, use call deferred on level manager uh, on waves finished let's see level manager on waves finished Mm. use call deferred I'm not sure to which part that goes but let's see uh, error coming from signal damage global area expected one argument but called with zero hmm okay we connected that incorrectly in our bad boss so let's see on damage we can just uh, say with health let's try this again and maybe can i disable this starting waves uh, let's see i think probably yes 
uh, wave. Here also zero. Okay, it should then just automatically switch to second wave. Or not. Okay, that's one. Then the second wave. Okay, and we have Vlad. And can we... Okay, he disappears. So that's not correct. Hmm. Let's see. Should I... Code of Earth, this. No. Okay, I think I know what is going on. So, if we go to our projectile, here we're queuing free the area that we hit, right? Uh, and I believe that is not correct because uh, we are also queuing free the um, the uh, Vlad, so we won't queue free that, but we will rather go to enemy script, and here we have the area free. Okay, so then go to enemy projectile. It is here that we actually have to add that uh, QE3. So let's do ARIA QE3. And then what we can do is go back to projectile. Uh, and here we don't need that. So we can disconnect that. Let's test this. Should still work. Okay, I destroyed it. Let's see whether I can destroy the projectile. Okay, uh, still not sure. No, it doesn't seem so. So, enemy projectile. And here I can just go to area entered. And here I can call area uh, QE3 and also QE3. That should fix the. Um, collision of the projectiles and we should fight with Vlad right now okay that's correct perfect come on oh you cheeky bastard okay Okay, and okay, <laughs> he still disappears. So let's see. Um, you know, this is projectile, it should be in enemy projectile. As I said, it's a little bit too late. 
and I'm a little bit tired, but we can go through this together. Okay. Um, because maybe the enemy projectile has a wrong configuration. So let's check the collisions. Okay. Uh, then enemy projectile scene. No, it all looks good. Doesn't seem like they are colliding. Mm. Projectile player. Player projectile, enemy projectile, projectile, wait, three, two, four, hmm. This should be triggered. Uh, I mean, right? But it doesn't. Because this is the wrong signal, of course. Um, note. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to debug. And QE free. Okay. Now we should be done with setting up everything. Yeah. I can destroy it. Perfect. wave let's try this again And it disappears so we have a bug okay so that annoying bug on the on the start of the game is because direction at the very start is uh, sometimes new so we can just set it to vector 0 at the start and now it should go away okay and now okay and the other thing i added to fix this is in the enemy i added this um is this the enemy script no here in the enemy i added this simple check on area enter to make sure that you're only colliding with the player projectile and now we should have all of our back fixed. Let's see. This is one. This is two. This is Vlad and he should not disappear. Yeah. Perfect. So that was a lot of searching and fixing. But we have that covered, so the next part is actually triggering the Vlad, um, Vlad skills whenever he'd like to attack us. Okay, so let's get those uh, Vlad skills going. 
and um, one of the skills that I would like to add to him is for him to shoot a homing missile at the player so how it will work is that we will have a missile like a bat missile that's gonna lock into the uh, location of the player and try to reach its destination correcting it curse every single frame but it would be unfair to create a projectile boss projectile that cannot be avoided so what we'll do is we'll only make the projectile track a player for a period of time and then we'll let go of the tracking uh, and we'll stick to one vector of movement thus allowing um, a player a short period when he, we can when he can try and avoid the homing missile by moving in um, in the other direction in the free space so for that I believe we will need a separate um, separate a scene let's see um, yeah and the scene is gonna be named homing bat so let's create new scene uh, this is gonna be area 2d and i'm gonna call this homing bat but homing projectile is also also good we'll add sprite to d and let's see uh, we will also need visible on screen notifier and of course the collision shape uh, let's save this um, and for the sprite we will need the bat and this is bat png perfect um, transform three times and uh, that's all good now let's add the rectangular shape like that and we need to add the script so go to scripts folder open and create perfect uh, let's start by adding a class name homing bat in the speed to be 350 and then we will need a reference to a player and to obtain it we'll just use groups so let's go to castle level let's select the player click node groups manage groups and we'll create a new group called player and let's add him here so he's now in the group it's like tagging him so it is easier to find and then in our homing bat um let's also open that as a scene okay so on ready we can say player is equal to get three get first node in the group player we we'll also specify two parameters here max homing time is set to two and current homing time is equal to zero okay we'll make this um, into a projectile so enemy projectile and interact with the player perfect um we head up spacer okay so the most important part is going on in the 
process delta. So first, um, let's add the delta to current homing time. And this is an alternative approach to managing base time events because we could also use a timer here. If current homing time is greater than uh, max homing time and there's a space here somewhere okay then we'll lock the uh, movement of our bat into the um, just the front right vector so position times vector to right rotated with the rotation times delta else if we have reference to player which we should look at player global position uh, and move towards the player so position equals position move toward player uh, global position with speed and delta then all we need is a hook to two signals which is screen exited which is just QE3 and um, are you entered? Or do I want this? I don't think so. We don't do we want the bats to be destroyed by the user projectiles. I don't think so. No, there's gonna be uh, another difficulty step to avoid those. Okay. So we can go back to Vlad and we can get a reference to the homing bat scene. Okay, so that's one of our uh, skills. The other one is uh, projectile. So enemy projectile, the SCN, perfect. Then, what else do we need? We need the ring texture for our skills. We need enemy scene. Um, just enemy TSEN. We need um, devil enemy config because we will be spawning devils. And we also, let's get rid of that need a chance to block which is going to be 0.3 and chance to teleport that's the values we'll use in the in second phase and then we need is blocking plug okay let's see um we have those values and let me bring those down actually <laughs> and i will also have uh, something called spray shot count okay let's open the scene and we should connect to our timeout now so let's go here and connect on action timer timeout this is fine so we will write a function that will allow us to pick the action that we'd like to perform i could do just pick random but i would like to have a little bit more control over that so pick action we'll get a random number
from 0 to 100 and we'll say if random number is less than 15 return action spawn devil if random number is less than 50 um, return action homing shot and else return action spray shot okay and with that action we could also here use our good old friend match so if the action is spawn devil We'll create the devil by calling enemy instantiate to we'll add it to a tree root at child devil. We must remember to initiate it. So init with devil enemy config and movement points. I will set this global position well, position to one of the movement points. Movement points pick random global position. Okay, that's the first skill handled. Then if we get homing shot. I will do I make this sprite to the play shooting. We'll instantiate the homing bat. We'll set its speed. Uh homing bat speed should be equal to do you have a bat speed value here? I don't think so, so we can add that. Mm. I believe the good value to start with is 3.0 and then also we have but homing time set to 2. We have that, uh, but speed then we have to do Homing bat uh, max homing time is equal to bat homing time. Uh, homing mm, bat global position is equal to shooting point global position. And then we finally can call get three root at child. Um, but okay uh, that should be that um, and then for the action spray shot I'm gonna do animated sprite to the play shooting and we will use our enemy projectile so spray shot count will loop across it and we'll rotate it a little bit it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be cool believe me the projectile is enemy projectile instantiate projectile global position is equal to shooting point global position we'll add it to the tree so add child uh, projectile we'll set the projectile rotation degrees and that's gonna be with another value here um so let's go here and I will just call this mean projectile 
degree. Yes. So we will rotate it and each and every one should be rotated differently. So I'm going to do mean projectile degree plus 15 times I. Um, and there's another pro thing we need to do. So projectile set projectile texture to ring texture at times i okay oh well, let's see oh yes and also we need a special way of moving for that uh what do you mean ring texture is okay it's just ring but let's see how it works for now with the spray shot so let's run this and let's see whether we can trigger the um, the skills of our vlad boss yeah let's get rid of that and I think we have some kind of bug. Yeah, because it feels like the enemy projectile. Hmm. Heals the enemy itself. Should not happen. And then me. Wait, 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 wait. This is an enemy. And it's only the player projectile, not the enemy projectile. And then there's an enemy projectile. I do not understand. Uh, but I'm just gonna check the area is projectile here. Um, and other than that, I will kill free. Always. I could do basically or area is player let's try this again okay i think the back happens when the enemy is moving oops uh there's a problem let's see projectile Rotation degrees. What well, seems to be nil and in in plus operator. Oh, of course. I think the problem with the enemy occurs whenever he shoots and move into the direction of the shot but i hope we solve that with our if statement oh okay so okay he spawned the enemy and there's a homing shot okay it's going to learn okay and now we can see that he spawns the spray shots and they're rotated but they're all moving in line uh, but we can fix this so let's go to enemy projectile and we will add uh, use trigonometry to create another movement pattern so mm -hmm, let me see I'm just gonna say uh, flat here 
as a special movement type and we'll use the trigonometry to move it using tangents so basically we could do else if or actually there's no else if here uh, Vlad uh, return exposition times tangents of degree to rad or actually we don't need that we need rotation times delta and then when we spawn it in Vladvos here we just need to say projectile projectile um what is just called pattern is equal to oh we don't have that exposed anywhere mm, let's say set a uh, flat pattern and then in the projectile and here i can just say mm, enemy projectile I can just say set Vlad pattern a uh, pattern is equal to projected pattern Vlad okay that should solve that problem and now when he uh, when he shoots spray pattern his spray shot it should spread across the screen Okay, wave two of two. Okay, and okay, you spawn that. Okay, and can I escape? Yes, I can escape because. Okay, and also, so you can see that I can escape the bat because the homing gets disabled, and then if he. Ah, this is hard. Do it. Okay, and we crashed because previously freed um this is interesting so uh, or player it's not let's see is create for deletion okay so we have to check whether the player is not null or whether he is not quit for deletion because otherwise the player global position is not existent because player does not exist. So lots of bugs. Uh, let's try this again. Okay, that's the first wave. Could maybe speed it up. And I died. So this should be enough. Um, and I'm thinking, are we connected to on are you entered? Yes, but this feels incorrect coming back oh we don't do anything when we're getting hit by homing bat but do we handle that in player yes okay let's try this again on okay hit me okay and that deletes me why it 
so here's my obvious mistake uh, right uh, we should do this and then this so uh, q3 if aria is projectile or aria is player and then only if I think we write this smart only if aria is projectile then call aria q3 that's why we're disappearing okay so we get rid of that now okay now this is correct let's see yeah i lose health i lose health again give me a homing bat homie okay and then i lose health again and i lose health again okay so we have that set up and this sorry sorry for all the bugs but this finishes the phase one so in the next section we can handle the phase two of our boss okay so now we can handle the phase two of our uh vlad so when we will trigger the phase two well basically this is up to us but let me open up the script and here let me open up the scene we have undamaged and then we can say if health system uh health oh there's a typo here i can smell it yeah uh is equal to 10 say trigger second phase okay and then i can write trigger second phase which will change few things we'll change the phase to phase two um we will change the action timer because right now our action timer is set to two and three and we'll speed uh speed it up so that uh, our vlad will do his skills more often uh, max time is equal to two we we'll update the spray shot count to five we'll change the minimal projectile degree to minus 30 we'll change the bat speed to 425 but then we have to decrease the time he's um homing so bat homing time 1.5 and that's basically it uh, but also if we are in the phase two as we are moving we would like to change some stuff here so first after we arrive to a given point and we set the next point let's first check if phase uh, if phase is equal to phase two so i would like to pick a random a number between zero and one and then if random is less than chance to block and we're not blocking already Oh, and that's not an assignment. Then we shall call start blocking. Else, if random is le more than equal chance to block and is blocking, we will stop blocking a 
okay we don't have those functions but that's not a problem and then also if random is less than chance to teleport we will set is blocking to true and we'll call teleport function which is not really a teleport uh Oh, we need to that's not a function i'm really really tired here guys but we're pushing through and it's too late for coffee uh, okay let's see start blocking uh, what we'll do is we'll simply say animated sprite to the play blocking and his blocking is set to true uh, stop blocking is going to reverse that so animated sprite to the play default and his blocking is set to false okay and then we need um teleport function and that's going to be really simple we will just say that current move movement point is set to null oops teleport um current movement point is set to null and animated sprite to d play teleport okay and now we need to handle all of that in our um animation finished callback so let's start if i made the sprite to the animation shooting is done because we have that animation right yeah okay then if we're blocking um resume playing blocking so i made the spread to the play blocking else just play default okay that handles blocking then if animated spread to the animation that we just finished is teleport oops We'll say that now if blocking is disabled because we shouldn't be able to damage him while he's blocking. We're playing default again and we choose random teleport point as movement points pick random global position global position is equal to random teleport point current movement point is movement points uh, pick random global position okay that's a lot but basically what we do here is we somehow improve the uh, Vlad skills in a second uh, phase, for example, making him shoot or um, summon devils more often. We increase the spray shot count, and therefore we also have to increase the the starting array, uh, the starting uh, sorry um, degree of the spray shot, and then we also increase the bat speed, but we decrease the homing time to still be able to escape from it, and then. 
As he reaches one of designated, designated movement points, we randomly trigger the blocking, um, the blocking skill, which will prevent him from taking damage, or we teleport him, which plays the teleport animation, and then, then just move him to a different position. So now we should use that is blocking uh, in on area entered. So let's see on area entered. Here we'll just see if if is blocking, which you will just call return. So if he is blocking, then we're not taking he's not taking any damage. Let's try this. So first enemy, then there's wave two of two, and we have Vlad, and I can see that he starts as blocking, so we should fix that. Starts with the wrong animation, and I'm really trying to fight him here. Damn it, it's actually really hard to, to get rid of those bats. Okay, I was able to hit his shots. Okay, and now, yeah, the second phase, phase starts. Right, you can see him teleporting. I would all love also to see him blocking. Damn it. Teleports again. Teleports again. Maybe we should increase his chance to block. I don't believe I saw him blocking even once. But he teleports very often. Okay. Let's see. Um... Okay, because this gets overridden, right? So the problem is... Um, start blocking, stop blocking... Basically, if he's not blocking, then we should allow him to teleport. Okay, let's try this again. Kill that enemy. Okay, he starts as blocking, so that's incorrect. But try and fight him. I'm trying to do as much damage as possible. Okay, now let's see. Okay, now he's blocking the damage. Right, I can see that. Will he also teleport? Oh, now you can see that the damage does nothing to him when he's blocking. Yeah. Okay. Now he's not teleporting. Let's see. Chance to block is 0 3. Uh, so these two values are too close together. Right. So 0 3. So basically, what I could do. is re-roll the random value and that should help i think so zero three if he's not blocking then re-roll now he should be able to block and teleport Okay, this is done. Uh, 
Okay, now he's teleporting and he's blocking. He's teleporting and he's blocking. Perfect, that's what I wanted. Okay, so we have phase two done. Um, what's left for us is to actually handle the possible resolutions of our game, which is like winning or losing, and then adding sound. So let's do that in the next two sections. Okay, about the game resolution itself, let's start by going to UI scene and we will need to add a few notes here and there. So let's start by adding a center container. And I'm going to call this game over container. Let's see, put that here. Uh, center, center. Uh, probably we need to provide no we don't need custom minimum size because we will add a panel it's gonna have custom minimum size let's do 200 by 200 mm. do team overrides flat and okay it's not going to be pretty because i'm not a ui designer but it's gonna be functional or at least I hope so uh, we'll add a label and we will add a button okay and the button is going to just say restart uh, can we put it in the center and the label and the label is gonna say something like you win you won okay uh, center center this is fine it will probably need the reference to that label so that's what I was talking about with the uh, unique access because if I'm gonna do this you can see how the how long the path is but I can just right click and do unique name and now we have it okay um, we'll hide it for the start and on uh, Vlad died we will simply just say we need the reference to game container to show it we we'll just say, say game container uh, show and then also we need Full player died mm, and we'll change the label text label text to uh you law oops you lost and call the game over container show and then in the very end we will connect to pressed signal here and we'll just simply get three reload current scene perfect and let's see um, about the player dying we should go to level manager and player we have the damage um, signal here but we also need to have player player died connect UI on player died okay so let's test this and I will simplify um, everything here by going to player and health system and changing my health to one okay so I see that I have only half a heart here okay let's see shoot me 
okay you lost restart and it is working perfect let's bring it back to 11 uh, and for the final test let's try fighting the blood okay we'll try to kill him hopes that everything works so let's spam those shots as fast as possible okay and now he's blocking come on come on dude give me a chance I must say this is a pretty cool fight. Okay, so we won, right? But there will be some problems here because let's see. Health system died on died. Uh, we should do that and will not fix the problem with Q3 uh, yet, but we will in the next part where we will add the sound so we have that done the last part is going to be um, adding sounds okay uh for the sound let's start with castle level and let's add and you will see how the game really comes together when we have some uh, sounds here. Let's add a stream player and here we will just find horror music. And now as we play, uh, I'm not hearing anything, maybe because my sound died or not. Um, oh, we first we need to go to uh, the castle level, right? And we need to turn auto play. And now we have music. Beautiful. Okay, then for the other sounds that uh, we'd like to have, uh, let's go to player and I'm gonna add audio of stream player and I'm gonna find shot sound and then in shooting system I will get the reference here for the oops I mean here and every time we say shoot gonna say play let's see now yeah and we have our sounds working then for the enemy so enemy and also enemy scene uh, we will add audio stream player again but this time is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to just define an array of sounds. So it's going to be, let's see, can I just, okay, let's get rid of that. So we have hit one through five. So I'm just going to select all of that and say control C control V three four five change this to two three four and five and then let's see um because that's a hit sound. So on area entered, 
probably here I need to do audio oh, I don't have reference okay audio stream player um, play but I would also like to define some random sound so we'll need two things here I will say audio stream player stream is equal to sound speak random and that's good but then here we'll have a little bit of a problem because if I were to play here I also call QE3 immediately meaning that the sound's gonna get cut off as the note is getting removed so instead I have to do something else I have to do audio stream player finished connect on sound finished and then only on uh, on sound finished I will call QE3 so that the sound can play let's try this now come on let me shoot you it still feels like it was cut off right uh, or so I thought so let's see maybe it was just that short okay uh, let's check that enemy area q3 okay is this sound so No, it doesn't feel right. Let's see. No, it feels like it's cut off still. And I know what the problem is. Uh, we need to hook into on animated sprite to do finish and do some changes so if the audio stream player is not playing then we can call q3 otherwise we should q3 when the sound is finished and now it should be all right Yeah, way better. Uh, then we have to go to our flat and also add uh, audio audio stream player here. Uh, and let's see how do should we handle this in our flat. I would assume we can go to enemy and copy the sounds array. Okay, and then we need to find um, we need to find the place where we are getting hit. So on area entered, this is all good. Um, And we should find on damaged here and then just say um again audio oh, we don't have the reference 
Okay. Audio stream player stream sounds pick random audio stream player uh, play uh, and then let me think um, on diet we will also do audio stream player stream uh, sounds pick random and oops and uh, no, this should be in on diet and audio stream player play and then to make this last sound play perfectly we need to do one thing which is audio stream player finished connect on sound finished and we can add that on sound finished uh check the health if it's zero then you can just give it free okay i think that's gonna be the final test And he's blocking right now. Okay. Perfect. We have won. So what is left for us to do is to check whether our mm, main menu it works properly just to make sure so i will be choosing frankenstein instead playing with the castle yeah it all looks good but then to finish it up i would like to work with our level select a little bit because if i'm going to choose pyramids level i'm not gonna fill this up but i'm just just for fancy is gonna set up the background to see whether this works scrolling background and we can then find the pyramid outside and the same we can go to forest level and i'm gonna add scrolling background so if you would like to add more levels you should have something to uh something to start with so let's Oh, mm, let's go to main menu, run current scene, and also because I am so nice, let's go here. Let's add audio stream player. Um, let's quick load horror music and autoplay, and also in forest level. Uh, no, in the level selection let's do the same audio stream player auto play quick load horror music now let's go to main menu cool and if you would like to lower it you can just set the volume db to something lower okay let's see i will choose a witch and i would like to play on forest level and it's not working because let's see forest level pyramids level uh it's almost working the one thing that we're missing of course is player 
and here is also a player try this again i'm selecting the witch or okay um invite set in the... okay i added it wrong so yeah works let's try this again uh main menu select wolfie go here oh it's probably because uh they're in, not in the right place move him here and move the player here and move it down because the order in the tree also has to be respected so last one time Wolfy forest and now we have that working okay oh my god we are done i'm so tired but again this is not a 100% complete tutorial, but I hope, I'm hoping that you're satisfied with that. You're very welcome to add more features to it and extend it. Uh, there are lots of assets that I didn't touch and didn't use, like this cool able enemy. You could create um, another, another boss by using, for example, the uh, Victor sprites or for example when it comes to pyramids level there's a uh where is it god head right that you can you can use and there are still many assets to to add to to extend but uh, i hope that's gonna satisfy your itch for a halloween game when it comes to godot and yeah i'm gonna see you in the next one thank you for all the subscriptions all the comments I read all of them. I'm not always able to answer to each and any of your problems. That's what I am uh, thinking about starting the Discord server. And also, also I'm thinking about starting something like buy me a coffee or YouTube membership. So if you have a problem and you're a member or you given me some kind of, of help on buy me a coffee uh, i will be more inclined to to help you with solving your godo issue thank you too for that and let's keep coding and let's keep creating because if there's something more satisfying than that see you guys in the next one